Maryland residents spent Tuesday hitting the polls and results are still coming in. But it could take days for final votes to be counted in some of the uh, closely contested races. Fox Live's Maureen Ume live now with what we know so far. Good morning, Maureen. Hey, good morning to both of you. Now, these races really mirror what we expected from early polling, showing that some of these races would be incredibly tight and we wouldn't have a result trial for days, perhaps. Others being clear-cut blowouts, and so that's exactly what we're seeing play out today, hours after the polls closed yesterday, and uh, we now have uh, some of those results. The big race, everyone talking about the gubernatorial race on the Democrat side, we don't have a clear-cut winner there. In fact, let's take you to what the percentages are right now. Uh, it was a wide field, but it really came down to four candidates, top candidates, in the lead right now with 37 percent of the vote is Wes Moore, the Robin Hood Foundation CEO. And then coming in second was uh, Tom Perez, the former labor secretary and also head at the DNC. Uh, Peter Franchot, 20 percent of the four-term controller of Maryland. A lot of people uh, thinking that perhaps he would have taken the lead. His campaign hoping these mail-in ballots come in uh, and really pushing him over the edge because they are convinced that that's really what's going to make the difference in this. Older people who were their core constituency uh, tending to vote in by mail-in ballots. So they're hoping that that will play out for them. The surprise here on the Republican side, Dan Cox blowing away Kelly Schultz. Dan Cox was supported by, uh, by former President Donald Trump, while Kelly Schultz was supported by uh, Larry Hogan. 56 percent Cox beat Schultz by. This was a surprise to a lot of people who really did not see that coming. But Cox, uh, you know, he really was sort of bombastic in some of his uh, way of thinking, very far right leaning agenda. Uh, he was definitely helped by some Democrats who actually poured money into him his campaign because they're looking at him as an easier beat in the general election in November. And so they poured money into his campaign, hoping that if he won, whoever wins on the Democratic side would more easily beat him. Cox, on the other hand, really taking this win for what it is, a win. He's talking about how he plans to govern when he is elected in November, should that happen. Here's a listen to him, uh, what, what he said to reporters after his victory speech. The progressive Democrats see our candidacy as the only one willing to stand up and articulate the values that everyone loves in Maryland. The progressive values of bigger government, of more lockdowns, of vaccine passports, of jabs for jobs, these are out the window in my administration. And that's why I'm reaching out to everyone, every background, saying, please join us. We're the candidacy that's going to give you your freedom back. All right, want to talk about the race now for Montgomery County County Exec. Again, this is a tight race, 40% to 38% with David Blair leading Mark Elrich. This is almost a recap of what happened in 2018. Uh, in Prince George's County, Angela also Brooks really just blowing away the competition, 91% of the vote right here. She retains her seat as county executive. And last but not least, Attorney General, the race there, we have former Lieutenant Governor and current U.S. Congressman Anthony Brown in the lead, beating First Lady of Maryland and former Baltimore Judge uh, Kathy, uh, Katie Kern O'Malley, excuse me, 60% of the vote is what Anthony Braun is leading by. Okay, back here live now. Again, this will all come down to mail-in ballots. The mail-in ballots will decide a lot of these very tight races, uh, but they will not even begin to be counted until tomorrow. That is one of the things that all the politicians really have said they'd like to see change here in the state of Maryland as far as mail-in voting and also having independents being able to weigh in in primaries. But we'll just have to wait to see exactly how this all plays out. These very tight races really could go any way because we're expecting at least uh, hundreds of thousands of votes to come in from these mail-in ballots. So watch and see. It's not over yet.